Hey everybody, welcome to Kingdom Justice. This is your host Courtney Jones speaking. And today we'll be going part five. I mean part I'm sorry, not five, part three. Today we're on part three of um evil spirits in high places. Now I want people to understand what this means. So we went through all these different uh spirits so far. We still left out some and <laughs> we still left out some, so I want to go into a couple things. Now what we gotta understand, we always hear the uh about the dragon in the sea. Uh, we also hear about the Leviathan. Uh, we hear about the Leviathan. We hear about the dragon in the sea. Uh, we also hear about the fleeing serpent. And what I want you to understand was we're going through these spirits is that all of them are, all those spirits together are the Amalekites. Uh, the king of the Amalekites is Agag. So what that means, Agag is a fiery one, and that's the serpent. And pretty much it's not just one of them, it's multiple ones. That's why Revelation, the Bible said in Revelation, that the devil and Satan, you know, it's two different ones, the devil and Satan. Now, what I want you to understand is devil is sometimes translated as demons. You have devil and you have demons. And, and you know, they said the king of the demons, who the king of the demons was uh, Beelzebub. So, you know, that he was the king of the demons. Uh, we also have what you call Satan, the accuser, the tempter, and the accuser. And so you also have what you call Leviathan. Leviathan is a spirit, is a spirit and what it does, what it means is he that twists. It, it twists up your words. So what they do is, for instance, that whatever I say, they twist. Some people may take it in another way. Um, for instance, we see people say that all the time. You see a man and a woman get in an argument, and a man may say, Oh, that dress, you know, this is an ad. And she said, oh, you said I'm ugly and I'm fat. It's like, well, where are you hearing that you're ugly and fat? I didn't say that. But they heard that, you see. And so that's what the Leviathan does. Leviathan, it says that, you know, God says, who can put a hook? And who can put a hook in the mouth of Leviathan? The reason why, because the Leviathan does not swim in real, actual water. It's a spiritual being. It doesn't swim in actual water. Uh, like we looking at the sea, but the God always talk about the sea creature. And so what man then did, they messed the translations up, and they trying to make the Bible more humanized and, 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 and physical. So what they did was they made a whale out of it. It's not a whale. It's a sea dragon. That's exactly what it is, a sea dragon. And we're going to see what the sea means. I'm going to show you what the sea means. Uh, for people who watch my other show uh, on Blog Talk, Kingdom Justice, I've been doing that for uh, maybe over a year or so now, so people already didn't hear that, no. But if not, for people on here, new people on here, and I want you to know what C means. Because I want you to understand that so you can see why, you see why what happens when you mess up a translation and you start trying to put a whale in it, and you're trying to humanize it with a whale, than what it really is. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 57, Isaiah 57 verse 20. Now, watch what God say. Watch what God say. But the wicked are like the tossing seas. Huh. When you the Bible say like, that means it is. The, but the wicked, what is the wicked? The kingdom of hell. And the kingdom of hell and also the people who take on the kingdom of hell knowledge and follow them. Say, but the wicked are like the tossing seas. They cannot keep still. It's water tossed of mire and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. There is no peace for the wicked. And that's why when Jesus had the storm come, remember, and the sea, the wicked. See, they were trying to come up against that boat when Jesus' and the disciples were on that boat. The same story as Jonah. They tried to come up against Jesus, though. It's a big difference. When they try to come up against him, Jesus told it, peace, be still. Now, you notice it said they can't keep still, but Jesus told it to be still. Now, we just read where it says, but the wicked are like tossing seas. They cannot keep still. But Jesus told them to keep still. It also says it water tosses up like mires and mud. Muddy. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. And Jesus told it, peace, be still. He, gave, he told it, peace. And be still. Now, we see what the seas are. I mean, so many scriptures, we can go on that to solve that problem. 
but I want you just to see that main scripture right there. Well, you see right then and there, you know, that's what it means. So the wicked, the same thing as the sea dragon, where people then took it and they turned it. Now you see it's not an actual live, you know, actual for as a physical whale. That's not it. But you see when people mess up the translations like this, when they mess up the translation, and this is what exactly what you hear. So when Jesus said, like, I'm going to be like the sounds of Jonah, just like Jonah was in the sea dragon for three days, he was going to be in the sea dragon, you see, in the belly of the sea dragon. Well, they changed it to well, you see, and they screwed it up. But see, one thing about the Bible, anytime it's bad translation, you'll find the real find the spiritual meaning or the meaning. The Holy Spirit is going to show you the spiritual meaning, but you're going to find the meaning in the Bible, as we just did. And if you look up seeds, if you go and look up Bible verses, you go online and go Bible verses on seeds, you will get so many that's going to show you so many of these things. And you're going to see, oh, my God, you know, so why do they say that? Because that's what they do. You see, you get people who, who it's almost like they're purposely, uh, at the time, purposely trying to keep you from the truth. Uh, or to make you, you know, make you see that they don't want you to get the truth. And this is why it's so close. This is why you have to be close with Jesus because if you're not, this is how people be deceived by things. This is why you can't be lazy. You got to put in the work because these people, because one thing about the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, was the Pharaoh is the devil. And one thing about him, he told the children of Israel this if you got time to serve the Lord, so you got so much time to serve the Lord, then you know what? Give them, don't give them no straw. If you don't have no straw to make bricks, what happens to the brick? The brick would crack. It won't hold up. So therefore, he made them have to get their own straw. Now they got to go out and try to find straw all over the place, searching for straw all over the place, trying to grab this and get this, and they still got to be able to make this quota, and they still got to be able to cook food and take care of their kids and everything else. So you see how what, what kind of mentality he has. And it's the same thing going on right now. You got time to serve the Lord, then guess what? The economy sucks. The economy sucks, we're going to drop it, now we're going to raise this up, that up, and then you're going to have to work two jobs, or you're going to have to work harder, or you're going to take more pressure, more of this, because you got time to serve the Lord. It's the same exact thing. And so what happened is, people didn't neglect the God, they didn't end up neglecting the Word of God all the time, and, they, and, and what they're trying to do is get the Pharaoh his bricks. You know, you're trying to make the quota. You're trying to go out and make sure you make this quota. And in the meantime, what you done done by doing that, you didn't cause, by doing that, what you didn't did is, you didn't buy, got lazy in the word. Some of us got lazy in the word. And we have not looked up the words. We have not did such and such. And we got lazy in, in the word. And we, because we worry too much about if we, you know, I, time is money. Time is this. I ain't got time. See, we didn't worry so much about trying to get that straw to make that brick. And so this is why they're being neglected. You know, the word of God has been neglected here. And I wanted you to see that because that's, that's going to see because I want you to see the mentality of how evil this spirit is, how evil Satan is, and these spirits that follow him. Now, what I want you also to see is that remember we was talking about, we left off last time, we were trying to get into the, some of the things about the Havites. We were trying to get into the Havites and also uh, how we were talking about the Havites or villagers. There are people like in villages. Uh, uh, you know, and people being little villages, mean little towns, little areas, they're pretty much they're they're usually they're gonna be like they're gonna start being like each other. They're gonna pretty much be like the majority. They not wherever, however, it's like for instance, people in a little town, and they say, well, no one never get out of this town, no one never went this far. There's this, and so what end up happening when people say that? What happens? Most people in that town don't go no further than what it is because they have you know they're all doing the same thing. Work on maybe they all work at plants. People get out of high school just to go work in the mine, a plant. Everybody's doing the similar things, you know, the women maybe working at some grocery stores, school, same thing. Nobody really getting out of this place, and no one see themselves being higher than that place. And that's why villages is always that way. And the same token, if a village is corrupted, and it's a, it's a town, a city, a village, if these things are corrupted. Now, you know, in a city is different. A city and a state, they're bigger. So people living in cities are bigger. So you got people moving quicker. You got people moving quicker. You got a, a whole bigger, di different surroundings where people can see themselves being as as big as some of these other people who set the bar. But when you start to see everybody's all doing the same thing, and this is what you have. So I want you. What I want to do is we're gonna go. 
to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Now, this is, they talking about Jesus. And I want you to see this because when people deal dealing with parasite spirit, a parasite spirit, it, it, it's, it's a small village. It means a small village. People that are small, they are broke down, got no confidence. See, these things, it's a spirit that caused this because it comes from a Jebusite. It comes from another spirit that beats the person down. Now, when a, a Havite is something different. A Havite is people who, who they, they, they're, they're, they're uppity people, people that's uppity, always worry about the fashion, the things of the world. Um, they always treat people lower than them. They think that they're so much better. It's a spirit that actually caused this. You know, also racism and these things come from this kind of spirit. Uh, where people even skinny, picking on people that's fat, people, vice versa. These things happen because it's coming from these kind of people. You see, they only worry about the things of the earth, um, you know, and they, you know, worry about how much they can gather, how much they can put into their barn, uh, how much they have, how much they can keep spending. Uh, the more they spend, the more, the more, you know, the more they feel good about this, or the more they, whatever. these are the kind of people. And we know we see movies about people like this. We all have met people like this. So I want you to see what Jesus was saying about this. Now it says, and they came to Jericho. Now it's Mark 10, chapter 46. And they came to Jericho, and, and as he was leaving Jericho, his, him and his disciples, and a great crowd. Now notice it said a great crowd, which means a big crowd. And it said uh, Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, and, um, and Timaeus, and Timaeus, his, his, it was sitting by the roadside. Now, Bartimaeus is a beggar, and he's the son of Timaeus, okay? Now, what Bartimaeus mean, if you know what Bartimaeus mean, what Bartimaeus mean, actually, when you, when you look it up in Greek, what it means is spiritual blindness. It actually means spiritual blindness. That's exactly what his name means. See how amazing that is? Because all these stories of people actually are going to tell you in their names the story. So his name actually means spiritual blindness. Okay? Now his father's name, Timaeus, means honor. So it says they were sitting by the roadside. Okay? Now the roadside, a lot of times the Bible used roads, it used dry roads, it used paths. Now a lot of times you see somebody sitting on the side of the road. You always hear them say sit on the side of the road, mean they've been cast off the road. See, they're not they're not there completely on the road. They're close like you know, they're not on the road, they're on the roadside. You see, they're on the side of the road. They're not walking completely on the road, they're on the side of the road. And so these people was on the side of the road. You know, Jesus talked about the Good Samaritan. He was beat up. Remember, he was beat down, stripped, and he was on the side of the road. See, they left him on the side of the road. I mean, he went on the path. He was on the side of the path. Now, watch what Jesus say. Now, let's find out why he's on the side of the path. Now, it says, Jesus answered... Now, let's go to they say, oh, he was sitting on the side of the road. And when, they, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And notice that he, now he's running to Jesus. Now, I want you to see this because I want you to understand this. He said, Jesus, son of David, okay, have mercy on me on me now he is trying to come to jesus now remember jesus is judgment he means judgment he's the gate so that means this man trying to come in to repent he's trying to come in to jesus he won't jesus but what has see what happened now he said jesus son of david have mercy on me and many rebuked him now you know that many rebuked him from coming to jesus mean mean they stopped at him from coming to jesus and that's what a lot of churches are doing right now they're 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 preaching they're stopping people from coming into their inheritance. They're stopping people from coming into Jesus because they don't want you to believe that you are just like Jesus. They want, they, they want you to believe that they're higher than you. They want you to believe that you should just sit down there and just keep on cleaning the church, keep on being in the bake sale, keep on going to work and come back, give me my money. And, and what happened is people are being crippled in a place. People are stopping people. Now, you know that the disciples who was working for Jesus or with Jesus, you know that they kept trying to rebuke people. They kept trying to keep people from coming to Jesus because they was worried about their place being taken. You remember when, uh, when, when the disciples came and said, hey, um, those people cast not demons in your name. So they worried about them doing what they're doing. And Jesus said, hey, don't, don't, don't stop them. 
Don't rebuke them. Hey, listen, don't do that. You see, it's see, but they're trying to because it's these spirits. See, these spirits on them want to put that jealousy in and want to make them feel, hey, uh, they're going to take your place. They can't know what you know because that's the world system. See how kings run? This is how Amorite spirits run. See, they don't want you to know what they know because they figure if you know what they know, then you can do what they do. That's why a king is on a, on a notch higher. Um, you know, same thing with presidents. From the presidents to the senators or whatever, these people all know some things that you don't know. Therefore, they can keep you where you are, and they can still they can rise above you and sit on top of your head. And so this is what happened. When this man trying to come to Jesus, where he can get a one-on-one -on -one relationship, where he can get this happening, it said, and they rebuked him. Many did. See, not, not just one did. Many did. Many people tried to hinder this man. Many people tried to stop him. Maybe his family, his friends. See, many people tried to stop him from coming into Jesus, to come into his inheritance to coming into the light, the truth. They are trying to stop you as well. See, some of you born again, you're still trying to stop you because you still don't see yourself as Jesus. You still don't see yourself in the army of God. You still don't see your spiritual authority. And you must see this because you need to go out and do the work of God. Every individual, male, female, it don't matter. Every individual that's called by his name is in the military of God. Now they need to go forth and administer his justice and his judgment against these spirits. And to help these people that's lost body spirits in the world. Now let me show you something. Now after we went in, and you know, it said many tried to do this to him. It said, tell him, this is what they were saying. Now look what the people are doing. After they trying to break him, they say, telling him to be silent. See, that's what they want you to be. No, no, sister, sister, sister Jenkins, don't say nothing in the church. Listen, I know about, nobody want to hear about what your revelation is. Listen, I'm been a pastor for 20 years. I know what I'm talking about. You just sit there. No, they don't want to hear what words you got from God. Now I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear your testimony because you ain't better than me. I don't want to. I don't. You know. I don't want to hear all that. I don't see. That's how some of that stuff is going on in the place. You see. I don't want you to try to correct me. I know what I'm doing. You just shut up and be quiet. Now they try to tell him to be silent, but they say, but he, but he cried out all the more. See, that's the kind of mentality you have. Even though they keep telling you no, you ain't like Jesus. The devil tell you, you ain't like Jesus. All the spirits tell you, you ain't like Jesus. The people trying to tell you, you ain't like Jesus. I don't care the Pope or the Bishop, the Cardinals trying to tell you, you ain't like Jesus. I don't care the preacher trying to tell you, you ain't like Jesus. The evangelist trying to tell you, you ain't like Jesus. But he kept crying out more. He kept praying out more. He kept believing. He didn't listen to nothing they said. And that's how you got to have that mentality. You can't just sit there and just say, well, I got, you know what? I do have the gift of prophecy. You got all the gifts. You got everything. You can't, oh, I'm just the event. You everything. Now, if God called you to put you in a certain position, that don't mean that you're not everything. You're supposed to be prepared for every good work. That means you're supposed to be all around, all around it. Yeah, you're supposed to be prepared for every good work that God has for, because you never know when he may call on you to do something else. So think about it. If you have a company, which guy are you going to call on? The one that you know he can do all things. He can do everything. He's multitask. He can do everything. That's going to be your guy. Well, it's the same thing with God. See, when a person don't look at themselves as just being there, you look at yourself being just an evangelist, that's all you're going to be is an evangelist. evangelist you're going to do what evangelists do, and you're not going to rise no higher than what evangelist is. But if you see yourself as a son of God, I mean, you all things. You are a leader. And a leader must know many things when you see yourself as this. See, there's a big difference. You're going to be prepared for every good work that God has. So you know what? When God wants you to come over here to do this, you're going to be able to do that. When God wants you over here to do this, he can be able to call you to do that. You're supposed to be prepared. Paul will tell you, for every good work. You see? Don't let people rob you. Don't let these spirits rob you of your inheritance. And I don't care. The more they tell you, the more a spirit tells you you don't believe in Jesus, they just tell you that you do. The more they tell you you don't come from God, the more they tell you that you at the table. The more they tell you, you ain't got no power, that means they're afraid. The more they trying to tell you to shut up because of your talk, they, you're going to end up rebuking them and get them out of there. Now they said, now they said he kept on crying out. He didn't care what they said. Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call, and stopped and said, call him and call him. And it says that, and they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart. See, take heart. Take courage. You see, hang in there. Take heart. Take courage. Believe. Get up. He is calling you. And 
it say throwing off his cork. He sprung up and came to Jesus. Now he said he took off his cork. Now what cork he had on? The same kind of cork they have in the world. So you, you put on that Babylonian cork. You put it on that religious cork. You put on that, that parasite cork because you've been used to these, some of these preachers and people keep putting you down. But see, and your denominations getting set up in little divisions. You won't rise no higher than that. That's not of God. When you hear Jesus making up denominations, that, that's not his thing. You see, but what happens is that Jesus is a divider. I want you to understand that because he's going to divide people. Because, see, people are going to divide. The reason why Jesus is going to divide people because people got to want Jesus fully. If they don't want Jesus fully, then they're going to see something else and they're going to hear something else. You see? That's why you notice that when Jesus was on the mountain with Moses and Elijah, you know, and um, when Jesus was there and all of a sudden they heard a voice come by. Remember, the cloud came by God in the cloud. You notice it say God overshadowed everybody. It means he's in control. Now, when he came in the cloud, he said, he said, this is my son, I'm well pleased. Now, listen to him, I'm well pleased. Now, you notice that when that happened, it say some people heard thunder. See, that means some people just heard natural thunder. They didn't hear anything, so they don't believe. They, they, I don't know what y'all, y'all just making this, I just heard thunder. Some people said that they heard an angel talking to him. See, we heard an angel talking to him. And that's why you got those people who, they, you know what, their religious uh, mentality, they have what you call the worship of angels. The worship of angels. Then you have the next people heard him. They said, oh, we heard him say, we heard God talk to him saying, this is my son. Oh, well, guess what? Jackpot, boom. They knew who he is. Them are the ones who are not going to be divided. And them are the ones that's going to stick in there. Them are the ones going to have to hang in there because, you see, they actually know who he is. And he is the gate. He's the sacrifice. When the other people don't think, they think, oh, well, see, an angel talking, he must just be a prophet. He must be just something like this. But see, and then they go on on these religious rules and the worship of angels. But see, when they heard him, they heard God say, testify who he was. There's a big difference between them. Now, let me see if I get through some of these other spirits. So I wanted you to see that there. Because see, I don't want people holding you back. Because a lot of these folks holding you back. And you got these spirits called archites. They call arch archites. Now, if you go to Genesis chapter 10, it's going to show you the genealogy, the genealogy of Canaan. Canaan had one of the wickedest genealogies you could think of. Everybody he had is demons. When you look them up, they're all demons. Now, that's why I say curse be Canaan, because he got nothing but demons and, and, and running through his line. Now, there's the one demon he has in his line called archites. Archites, what it means is blind passions. It means blind passions and wanderers or fugitives. Now, what that means is people who, the best way to explain this is people that are trisexuals, people that try anything. You see, they, they, they want any kind of pa pleasure. That's what passion means, pleasure. So any kind of pleasure they can find. Hey, listen, I'm over here, I'm partying over. Anything I can find, see, I can get into. I try. I try anything once. You hear people say that. I try anything once. See, these are the kind of people that's running around in blind desires. And you notice they say, future to the wanderers. They're wondering. They're looking for it. They go into this party over here. Then they find themselves in bisexuality. They find themselves into bestiality. They find themselves into this drug. They find themselves in taking harder drugs. This kind of party. So I party over this kind of way. I hang out with this crowd. To this. See, they're looking. And see, they're blind. All these things, are, all these, these passions, all these passions are going to do is keep them blind. You see, they're going to they're gonna keep, keep them blind. You see? And so some of them people know the truth, but they so called into their passion. And that's what's blind them. There's another one. It's called a Sinite. A Sinite spirit. It's called a Sinite. Now what a Sinite is, it's a hate it's meaning hateful passion. It means hateful passions and muddy. Now you remember the we we talked about Isaiah fifty seven, how it kicks up mud, muddy, pigs. You know, it's always gonna say mud because pigs like to wallow in mud and filth. That's what mud means, filth. Dogs like the filth. They're filthy. Now, what I want you to see is it's saying hateful passions. Now, what is hateful desires? What is hateful pleasures? See, a person wants to what is hateful pleasures? 
people can be in racism, uh, you know, they have hateful pleasures. They, they like putting down people, people that actually like to beat on animals. You got people that like to bruise animals. People like to molest kids and molest their own family, beat on their own family. Now, you know what? They all, they get off on this. See, they get off on beating someone. They get off on terrorizing their, uh, this person. They get off on, uh, you know, raping, like people, rapists. Rapists as a Senite. It's, it's a Senite spirit caused them to do that because it's feeding on this. So it caused them to do this. So what happens is they get off on this. They, they get all fed up because they torture somebody, making themselves feel big and strong. You see, they, 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 they like this. And, and, and so this is, a, this, is a, this is pleasure to them. Even though it's torment to other people, the more they terrorize another person, the more they feel good about themselves. You see, the more they keep beating the person down mentally and, 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 and talking so bad about them, the more they feel great inside their self. The more they put people down like a bully. You see how bullies are? Bullies feel good. They bullies feel great when they treat people like trash. See, they, they, they love it. They get off on it. This is like the best thing in the world for them. So they start out as kids just doing it. You see, doing this stuff. And, and, and then they start picking on people. They terrorizing people. They think it's fun. You see, people coming home beating on his wife or the man beating on his wife or the woman mentally beating on her husband or physically beating on her, vice versa. They, they getting off on this. She get off on putting them down and be, it, make, it make her feel good inside. And so it's the same thing that you have. This, this, this spirit, it loves to do violence and hateful things. You know, it loves to argue and put people down because, you know what, it makes it feel like somebody big. It makes it feel strong, you see, and this is what a Senite does. This is the reason why people get beaten. This is the reason why, why children get molested by their own family and people around. This is all this. This is why women get raped. This spirit causes all these things. It's called a Senite, and that's what it does. And it also says that it knows right but does wrong. See, those people be knowing they're doing wrong. See, they know I, I, when I'm doing it wrong, but you know what? They can't help it because it, it, it's like it's a drug. They have to do it because their spirit is so in deep in them. They have to feed it. And as they feed it, it's feeding them. So they feeding, they're feeling pretty good about it. You see? And they're going to keep on because they got to get rid of their spirit that's inside of them. There's another spirit called a, a, a Arvodite. It's called an Arvodite. And what it means is money hungry thief, money hungry thief, which is also mean plunderer and pirate. So we know pirates love to what? Rob, steal. They'll do anything to get plunder, to get money. So these are the kind of people we see in the world that they will, they listen, they will lie, steal, kill. They will sleep with people, seduce people. They will do whatever it takes because their spirit caused them to have this love of money. And it possesses them to want money and want this so bad and want objects so bad that they're willing to give anything for the object. Because, see, the more they get, you see, the more they can get those same pleasures, those blind pleasures they can have. And so that's what this spirit does. They put people in this situation. Now we have another one called, um, we got another one that's called, I'm trying to make sure I pronounce this correctly. There's another one that's called a Zimariah. It's called a Zimariah. And, um, yeah, Zim and I'm sorry, not Zimarite, a Zimarite. I'm sorry, it's called a Zimarite, a Zimarite. And what it means is power hungry, people who's addicted to power and, and, and can be in control. You see how all these spirits go together? How the, the, the Sinite, who it, it wants to be in control and power over people and terrorize, and this same thing, this, this spirit is, is power hungry. It's addicted to power. It'll do anything to get power. It'll lie, steal, cheat, whatever it is, it needs to get power. So it's a spirit like this that goes out and need to have power. And you know, people have power on so many different levels. That means that you ain't got to be a person that's just rich. It's people that got power in these ghetto areas. They want to be the baddest guy on the block. You got people who want to be baddest guys in the trailer park. You got people who want to be baddest guys in the suburbs. You got people who want to do all these different things. You got people who want to be the baddest guy in the police department. People who want to be the baddest guy in the military. See, you got these kind of people like this. You see, they power hungry. They want the people to look at them, people to fear them, people to respect them people to worship them. Well, this is this person. This is a spirit that causes this. And this spirit, all these spirits are in the church. They're all in the church and they're all trying to, they're all in the church and they're all in the world. And there's another spirit it called, uh, there's another spirit it called, um, let me see, I'm running out of time here. I, I'm actually running out of time here while I got, uh, I got to try to get through this, I got to get through the spirit. A hammer, a, a hammonite. It's called a ham, a hammonite. Hamanite spirit. And what it means is trust 
and your riches. It means that it's a spirit that makes people trust in their ability and make people think they trust in their riches. You know that Esau trusts in his hunt, his hunt ability. He trusts in who he was. He trusts in his ability more than God. He was a man of the earth. And that's what this spirit does. It makes you trust in your riches and, and uh, your riches and your possessions. This is why the man cannot follow Jesus. Because, see, he trusts and his riches, and, it, and, and the problem when you trust in your riches and these things is that you got to go through a day of rest. That means that you got to come into the rest of God. And so you got to give everything you have up, up to follow God. And see, this is what this spirit makes sure you don't get it because it makes you rely on riches. And when you rely on riches, then you can't do the things that God has you to do. So we went through this here in this part three teaching. And I hope for we're going to go through a course. We've got, we got, we got some more to go through because we got so many of these things to go through. But I'm trying to go through them as fast as possible I can. On my other show, usually I'm working on uh, talking about the fighting of Amalekites uh, on Blog Talk. We're talking about fighting the Amalekites. But right now we got the website. We got another website that we got going up that I'm working on, that I'm building on, that I'm working on right now. And it's not completely built. But I've been working on it, and it's almost finished, pretty much almost finished. And so we got all kind of stuff. You can go in there, and it talks about these evil spirits. You can also go to, you can also go to godelects.org. That's G-O-D-E-L-E-C-T-S. I mean, C-T-S dot O-R-G dot org. And it has the same thing.